the delay bug in Alliance Quest starting, what's being done to fix it, true accuracy and auto block interactions with Overseer is broken, Doc Ock doesn't work in Cavalier tech mode and prestige info revealed for Scarlet Witch Sigil. Yes, hello everybody, welcome to the Marvel Contest of Champions news show for Wednesday. And as usual, the reminder is hit the like button, subscribe or post notifications on all because we're covering a lot of information. Each and every show covers information as well as stuff within the community that needs to be mentioned. Like today is your reminder that the Langorian Rifts are going to have the second weekly edition, which will be Mephisto. It's more than likely these will actually stay, so you'll have the Guillotine one and as well you have the Mephisto one, so you'll be able to see two weeks worth. But I would say in order to make sure this is actually fine, do it now. So do the Guillotine one now if you haven't, and as well the Arena resets as well. So if you want to get an opportunity to get some of those Iron Tomb Shards, Go and do the grind now, get them done, because they will be renewing at 10 a.m. PST today. But just before, as we normally do get into news, we've got to give thanks. Thanks to so, so much to people that support the channel as a YouTube member. Thank you very much to those that support on Patreon. You're on screen now. A lot of years of support. And as well, those that support on twitch.tv slash richthemanlive. If you have an Amazon Prime account, you can give a free Twitch sub to myself. That would be very much appreciated. Those that give tier one subs, those that give gifted subs, bits and that stuff thank you so much and as well uh donations as well thank you for keeping uh, the channel going so appreciate you but now we've got to do the news in news news so in the news in news news we've got to look we're going to cover the marvel insider stuff this is actually a really good time to do marvel insider so if you're looking to grab some points you've got the bloodlines questing bundle which gives three level two revives very very nice the le five level three health potions and three energy refill excellent that's good to see that the other bundle is actually relatively good as well. Not completely good, especially in comparison to what you get back. But still, three level one revives. Holy hell yeah. Five level two health potions and small um, energy refills. Yes, there is the Overseer. Yes, there's some crystal shards. But when those are in, you know there are going to be a spicy number to buy in uh, in Marvel Insider. Now on to bugs, things, and kabam. You know, those few things that kind of link together quite nicely and painfully at the same time. So... The Alliance Quest changes, as a lot of you know, started on the 6th. We had a really scuffy time when things didn't work, did work, didn't work. And now we're at a point where there is always seems to be a delay in the way that Alliance Quest starts off. Back about four days ago, Kabam were looking into some elements with this. And yeah, on Saturday was a really scuffy time for this, uh, to a point where I think we didn't get it live till like Sunday time. One of the biggest updates I think I found was like straight after was uh, Kabam said, and hey there everyone players should be able to enter the AQ correctly though they may need to manually start the AQ and there may be a 15 minute delay on the startup at most. The team is working on a fix for this as soon as we can um, Thought though it may not be able to put it out this weekend we thank you for your opinion. Now there's been a little bit of kind of like back and forth since then as to whether or not it's working or oh, it's not. The delay there, the delay, the delay isn't. But at the end of the day, it looks like, you know, some people are, seem to be experiencing a problem. I, I would say that everybody's probably experiencing the same problem of the delay of it actually getting started. And the latest like response I've seen is Kabambu saying uh, a couple of days ago, Hi folks, we sincerely apologize for the delay. Our team is aware of the issue and, uh, at present and are working to fix it. We appreciate your patience and cooperation in this. Thank you so much. Yeah, okay, so... It's just a case with the Alliance Quest situation. It's that it, God only knows when it's going to be sorted out. But I can imagine it will be either going to... I don't think they'll do a hot fix. Could they fix this whilst the game is kind of like like the live side of things? Maybe. Uh, would this be something that would be fixed in the next, next update? Like, I, I don't know. I don't know if they wait that long. Especially because we've just gone through the first sequence. And the first sequence has been very scuffy. So therefore, when is the... Um, when is a new sequence coming in? That will probably be when this will all look to be rectified. Because it's annoying for, for, for a lot of players that want to get straight in. Especially if it's time sensitive. And say wherever you are in the world you want to get in. You want to do the grind and you want to go to sleep. Or say you know um, you work it around when, when time you work. Go to school. That kind of stuff as well. And the pressures of having to move at certain times. To unlock certain people on uh, certain links. And as well just taking stuff down. Nextly, and the confusion of Dr. Octopus, Power Lock, not working in high voltage node in monthly Cavalier difficulty. So for a lot of you that do Cavalier, you'll know in the tech node, 
if you're able to inflict a power control or I think it's shock, you're able to, and there's, there's some other features as well, you're able to interact with that and as a result build things like uh, passive fury and suppress things when it comes to the unblockable effects the enemy gets. But what if there's sort of a champion that you go, hmm, this would work, but then in actuality does not. And there's a lot of splitting of hairs when it comes to this. Uh, the, the reference, if you don't know what splitting of hairs is like, as bastardization, making others go along, um, truth, not truth, and what seems to be the truth, let's just go into it. So the question was posed to Kabam on the subject. I mean, player here has the, the right take here. It's saying, uh, this week's listen, it's because of the node says, each time a power drain burn or lock, it gives a shock. Unduped, he applies a power lock that should trigger the node. Duped, it becomes a power drain and that should still trigger the node. Either way, it should work. And then I 100% understand the hill block one as that became life steal, which doesn't interact with the last one swording of node. This on paper interacts no matter which way you look at it. Power lock or power drain, both should work. Champion's abilities are right here. The awakened ability, which is that uh, physics of uh, the academic breakdown is that drain 100% of the power gained and stilled, uh, still 8% uh, of the power drained. So it's like a power power gained, power steal, but it's specificity, that's a word, uh, is just so old in the interaction with the node that Kaban present for the tech that they've got a response to this. Which is this here saying, Hello Samuel, I wanted to share with you what we found. Awakened Dr. Octopus does not apply a standard power lock, so it's not triggering that node effect. The same thing is true with this heal block like effect from his signature ability as well. While they perform a similar action to the other effects, the additional part of them in this signature ability makes the effects different overall. And I think it's just one of these scenarios, isn't it? There's like this 200 champions in Marvel Contest of Champions, all with unique types of abilities. And the interaction with all these different kind of nodes becomes a little bit kind of annoying to track. I've done the best I can with, with my channel, with other players as well, other uh, community members. I tried like tracking stuff down, making sure we're doing things like the Cavalier Cheat Sheet, uh, the, the the Cavalier Guide by Papa Squishy. So it's it's like trying to like keep a hand on it, but a lot of the times these little bits of kind of wording effects versus buffs, changes nodes and ability accuracy reduction, it does become incredibly difficult to keep a handle on what is correct to use and what isn't. So yeah, this has uh, definitely been one of those situations. So you can't use Doc Ock effectively and it's got the unawakened ability or the unawakened uh, version of the champion and taken into this month's uh, Cavalier difficulty. So a bit annoying, but uh, yeah. And we must move swiftly over to talk about Scarlet Witch. So Scarlet Witch Sigil is a champion that's been given for the people that buy the Summoner Sigil. You're getting little bits kind of like here and there, these little credits that add up to you getting the champion. Will you get it from a free to play narrative? Maybe. Kabama said after six months of the champion being released, which does put it into the more kind of December field, that there may be an opportunity to get this champion and and that that would be great. Hopefully there's something there like uh, similar to, as I said, Platinum Pool, similar to uh, it's Platinum Pool with, with you can buy with Incursion's Artifacts, and maybe there's going to be a similar thing, or maybe it's going to be entered into a different type of Crystal or Shard type thing, or maybe something to do with Relics. Who the heck knows with Marvel Contest of Champions and Kabam nowadays? But the kind of point needs to be remained at like, where does prestige go? How much of an impact this will have? So if you do want to check out the spotlight, go to the link in the description. As it says here, if you get the six star one, it's a 13,680 on the prestige and then a uh, five star one, uh, 10,630. 10, 10, what does that do to the game? And well, you can see here from the mystic side of things, it puts her in at number three at uh, that 10,630 10, whatever it is for the prestige. So again, that gives you an idea. It's not huge. When you put it into the um, kind of the grander scheme of things, it doesn't put too high. Like we're, we're, we're talking like 25th, 25th there. It's, it's pretty kind of like, it's pretty low. 25th prestige all over uh, overall. So it's like, ooh. A lot of the times making that decision for a prestige bump when it comes to alliances and will this create like an unfair advantage? I don't see it being too much of an issue for that like saying like okay I'm just gonna rank up in 200 signature my Scarlet Witch Sigil because it's the best champion in the game or it's the 
quintessential prestige champion. That is not the case in, in this. So there's some bits of good news. Because I did think that with this being released, depending on the prestige, would it be very anti-competitive to have that kind of like, um, I don't know, bump that players would be getting for basically spending on that champion. So I think Kabam have had to be very careful with that as well. So essentially, if you do want to get yourself a big prestige bump, uh, it's going to be a case of ranking up and uh, awakening and high signaging your Silver Surfer, Doctor Doom, Thor, uh, Ragnarok, Namor, the Overseer, Platinum Pool, Phoenix, Gold Pool. Well, actually, Platinum Pool's a bit weird that that's there. I tell you what, that is very, very weird to have Platinum Pool so high up there because that's, hmm, yeah. But, you know, the narrative again that's very, a little bit different to, to Scarlet Witch Sigil. In any case, it is what it is and... Um, and yeah, we hope for more information on Scarlet Witch Sigil and trying to get out. If you do want to see some of the abilities, as I said, go and check out the spotlight, which is the link is in the description down below. Next up, and let's talk about Overseer. So uh, something to bear in mind. So in the video I did a little while ago, which is a boss battles video, uh, many people did point out in the comments section. Thank you very much for, for people to mention that. And uh, that is that I referred to True Strike in the dealing with uh, Auto Block, which is incorrect. It's True Accuracy. Go figure. There's a there's a load of nodes in the game, and uh, unfortunately, like forgetting those things is is quite important. So, true accuracy champions are some of the best to take down uh, overseer. But interaction things seem to be a bit of an issue. So, uh, put a link in the description to uh, Dunares SK, which has some information about building true strike. More man's there. Uh, Hit monkeys there, and I think that's to do with a synergy. You've got Cull Obsidian, Proxima Midnight, and Champion. You, you name it, there's, there's a few there uh, with it, and especially with Skateboard Attacks with Night Thrasher, which I actually might use Night Thrasher. However, though, we need to go back to the point. The point of the matter is all about Overseer and the interaction with True Accuracy, with some champions not even being able to deal with situations. Even, uh, someone saying here, also not sure if it's related, but unfortunately do not have a video, but Falcon with Locked On was still getting auto-blocked. So... Maybe that's a that's a case that that will be you know something to bear in mind. But many players are talking about it. Even I think somebody sent me a, a footage of Mole Man not working as intended against this particular interaction, which again sucks because you think right okay, um, true accuracy is meant to take it down. Mole God is meant to take down uh, Overseer, but that's not the case. Here is a little still of that happening where that's the auto block feature there coming up and seeing that uh, indeed true accuracy was present. So yeah, I don't know what's gone down with this. There's a bit of a fine line between players kind of disagreeing on stuff, agreeing to disagree on the subject. So here's the thing with this, it's the interaction. The auto block that Overseer has is a passive and there's a bit of discrepancy between like say, players thinking that, or players saying that the interaction when you've got true accuracy is meant to it's, de it's definitely meant to suppress, but some people are kind of like falling out on the matter. But that's the thing. Like, I, I think that maybe Command have kind of like coded either coded it incorrectly, or the interaction's false. Here's another interaction here. Signature 200, Angela getting auto blocked. Also tried Annihilus and uh, Dark. I would say Dark Hawk synergy, which should give him true accuracy when getting auto blocked. Didn't work. This needs to be fixed before uh, the event quest ends. I would recommend leaving the Overseer fight towards the end of the week to do uh if you if you want to do it like really quickly it's as it, it does seem to me that this is indeed broken it also was announced on june 8th that command were looking into it so this was yesterday i've seen players try Aegon as well in this and it just seems that this is broken command haven't updated this thread i'll try and keep up to date with this as as I best i can but uh, yeah it does seem that this is indeed broken so uh so yeah hopefully this is fixed because i want to do that fight on 100 cabinet as soon as possible so i can move on to some other content so yeah keep locked to the channel friday news we'll see if we get an update for you and now on to the final thing i'm going to cover in the news today and that is arena predictions for purgatory and daredevil hell's kitchen the biggest problem with this is it's going to be the new arena sequence or the new kind of like milestone setup and new setup in general so i think that like that's going to affect the basic but not the featured side of things also, the hype around Purgatory, I don't know if I've seen like much of a hype around it, especially because you've got to get the champion. I think some people have noted that it's good, it's it's a fine champion, but whether or not it's going to go super high or not, that's going to be the main thing. But because these arenas have always been unpredictable, especially with the featured 6-star, I think that's why I've gone so high with that one. So on screen now, and my predictions are down below, by the way, they're always down below in this segment. Purgatory is a 6-star, I'm going with 150 mil. I think that it's it's very high, but at the same time, 
it's so unpredictable and I just don't know where it's going to go. I think, what was it like, Mr. Sinister, not Mr. Sinister, Mr. Negative went like 100 and, 140, 150 mil to get the champion. Uh, it's, it's so difficult to, to kind of like get this down right now. Purgatory is a five star, 60 mil, I think that's fair. I think that it'll probably go anything between like 50 and 60, but 60 mil to be safe. Daredevil's a six star, I'm going with 60 mil. I'm gonna stick my neck out and say that it's not gonna go very high, especially with the, the redu reducing points of the six star, uh, the point of rank two, I think it is. Rank three's fine from what I gather. And then the five star, uh, Daredevil, Hell's Kitchen, 30 mil. I think this is just because the well, not hype, not be like unfair, but the hype around um, getting a Daredevil Hell's Kitchen is very different, and it's not been as kind of dramatic. But I think if you want to, if you want an easy shot at a low six star, the same way that uh, several other champions have gone in the past few weeks, then go go for it. I think that's is well worth doing a shot. Maybe put up to upwards of seventy mil if you feel that sixty mil is too low. But I just got this feeling around uh, Daredevil's Hell's Kitchen that he's not going to be very high. There we go. That's been the Marvel Contest of Champions news show for Wednesday. Thanks very much for watching. Make sure to keep locked to the channel for, for lots of different and fun content. I think we've got like um, a double platinum pool, incursions, artifact crystal opening later on. We've got uh, the 10 six-star crystal opening coming up this week. A five-star hunt for uh, Professor X or Omega Red. You know, lots on. Thanks very much. See you soon. Bye-bye.